Good morning everyone. In this lecture, let's discuss more about various stages and regimes of diagenesis. The process is divided into different regimes or different stages. So there are basically three stages in which the diagenesis or the process of diagenesis is divided into. The first one of which is eogenesis. So let's talk about eogenesis in our coming lecture. The diagenetic changes generally include number of factors that causes post-depositional mixing of sediment because of bioturbation, rearrangement of grain packing and loss of porosity because of the compaction due to sediment loading, the loss of porosity through cementation because the pore spaces may be filled by orthogenic cementing minerals, partial or complete destruction of some of the framework grains due to pressure solution, destruction of framework grains, cements or matrix by dissolution creating secondary porosity, then replacement of some of the minerals by other mineral and clay mineral orthogenesis which means the formation of clay mineral in situ. Diagenesis takes place during burial at depth ranging from the depositional interface that is near surface condition to up to a depth of 15 km or more. The pressure temperature conditions under which diagenesis occurs essentially extend from those that characterize weathering that is our surface condition to those that characterize metamorphism. So the lower limit of diagenesis would be the initial stage of metamorphism. There are no clear cut boundaries on either end of the scale although diagenesis is commonly takes place at a temperature below about 200 to 250 degrees Celsius and associated pressures of below 5 kilobar. Diagenesis proceeds through three recognizable stages as we have mentioned about the first one is the eogenetic and second one being the mesogenetic and third one is the telogenetic process. This indicates time of early burial, deep burial and later stage erosion of sediments. Now here I am showing a pressure temperature diagram relating to diagenesis. As we have discussed the realm of diagenesis as seen in this figure it is between a temperature from surface condition to up to about 250 degrees Celsius and pressure is about 5 kilobar. This is where you have the process of diagenesis occurs. Beyond that you if you see this is the lower limit of diagenesis and beyond that you have contact metamorphism, low grade regional metamorphism and other type of metamorphism happens. Again the diagenesis also depend on the process called geothermal gradient. The 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer geothermal gradient is typical of stable cratons whereas 30 degrees Celsius per kilometer gradient is typical of rifted sedimentary basin. So geothermal gradient is also important factor in diagenesis. Now let's discuss about the process called eogenesis. As we have mentioned eogenesis is the earliest stage of diagenesis which takes place at a very shallow depth. So which means that a few meters up to few tons of meters that is what the realm of eogenesis. These are largely happens under conditions of depositional environment. The important biological and chemical or mineralogical diagenetic changes occurs during the stage of eogenesis with the course of mineralogical diagenesis which are determined by the EH and pH condition and the chemical composition of the pore waters. Minor lithification of sediment takes place in eogenetic environment because of the cementation process due to the formation of orthogenic minerals from the pore waters. There is very little physical combustion happens in the zone of eogenesis that is because of the shallow depth of burial and lack of overburden thickness or uh, rather the lack of overburden pressure because of the overburden soil 
or rock. If you see the eogenetic reactions in marine sediments, it is dominated by dissolution of unstable fine grained components and formation of new minerals. An example for which is the formation of pyrite in the zone of sulphate reduction owing to reaction of hydrogen sulphide with iron bearing minerals such as iron oxides, chloride and biotite. If you recall the composition of pyrite is FeS2 so it is an iron sulphide mineral. Other important reactions include formation of orthogenic iron rich chlorides or chamosite, gloconite, illite or smectite clay minerals and precipitation of potassium feldspar overgrowth, quartz overgrowth and carbonate cements. These are the characteristic reactions orthogenic mineral formation that happens in marine sediments. The order of formation of these minerals is precipitation of pyrite, chloride in anoxic pore waters with the absence of oxygen, illite or smectite which happens in the presence of oxygen in the pore waters followed by precipitation of quartz and feldspar overgrowth and finally the precipitation of carbonate cement. So these are some of the reaction and the formation of orthogenic minerals that happens in marine sediments. Now let's consider the bacterial activity that plays an important role in the diagenetic reactions. Uh, generally at shallow depth as we have seen in the eogenetic zone. Such reactions happen in shale and mudstone. The bacterial oxidation of organic matter that is CH2O plus oxygen in the presence of oxygen which gives H plus ions and HCO3 minus ions which gives H plus ions and bicarbonates. So the bacterial oxidation of organic matter in oxid sediments at very shallow burial depth which generates bicarbonate ions and sometimes some ammonia and phosphates. At slightly greater depth oxygen is depleted and reducing conditions prevail. So the bacterial sulphate reduction is a dominant process at this depth. So you have again CH2O plus SO4 2 minus which gives bicarbonate and H2S hydrogen sulphide. This process leads to the formation of bicarbonate and hydrogen sulphide with a consequent reduction in its pH of the pore water. The sulphide reducing bacteria does not diffuse downward that is at a, a depth of greater than 10 meter and below that depth the sulphate reduction gives way to fermentation. The reaction for which is 2CH2O plus water which gives methane, bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. So the fermentation produces methane, bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions. The early diagenetic reactions in non-marine sediments, so far we have discussed marine sediments. Now let's consider the non-marine sediments which differ from those in the marine sediments. These reactions of which include partial to complete dissolution of unstable heavy minerals, then feldspars and rock fragments, partial replacement of rock fragments or silicate minerals by illite or monmorlite clay and precipitation of orthogenic feldspar, quartz, zeolite, clay minerals. So mainly monmorlite or mixed layer illite, monmorlite, those are clay minerals. Then you have iron oxides and calcite. A good example for such a reaction is hematite that occurs in red beds like the ones that uh, used to construct the red fort if you remember that those are red sandstones and that may be generated orthogenically under these kinds of condition. So hematite is an oxide of iron that form in situ by such reaction. So with this we complete the topic on your genetic process of diagenesis. Thank you.